right? Well, this is a test. I got these. They are watercolor in a stick. Um, they're not advertised like Coran de Arche or Stabilo Woody's. Um, I used to use American Journey watercolors all the time when I did strictly watercolor and I love their watercolors. Now they have these sticks and I ordered them and, and each one, you know, I have to tell you, is pretty pricey. It's about the price of a tube of, of their watercolor. Um, and so I ordered some that were my favorite colors, as I recall, in my watercolor days. So I wanted to really try them out and see, you know, if I could use them like I use my Coran de Archer, if they really, you know, were a decent substitute for watercolors. Um, typically, I have not found that to be the case with watercolor sticks that they tend to to wash out and they tend not to be as vibrant but let's let's give it a whirl um okay so this is quinacridone sienna which is a burnt sienna let me go for the warm colors first let me organize this maybe you can help me with this i get all my warm colors over here Get white over here. I don't know if I ordered black. That wasn't exactly brilliant. But um and what did I get of this? Is this two of the same? No, indigo and Prussian blue. Okay, so they're different. Whoosh. So these babies I would say are cool. And these are warm. Alright? They're not in particular order, and then I have white. And I don't know why I didn't order black, but I didn't. So of the warm colors, I have American Journey from Cheap Joe's. Um, and this is Quinacridone Sienna. I like the Quinacridone colors because they are transparent and they blend nicely. So I wish I could get that into focus. This one is what they call Halloween Orange, and it's really a combination, and it tells on the back, which I like what it's made out of. And it's made out of Benzamita Orange, which is a transparent orange. And that's it. But they renamed it and called it Halloween Orange. Okay, this is classic raw sienna. All right, this is gamboge, which I always like as a warm, and and it's not mixed. The, these these are pure colors. This one is a sour lemon. That's what they call it, but it's actually a Hansa yellow. This one is Burnt Sienna, which I always like because it's a really rich brown. And in acrylics, I generally mix those, and I would mix these too. And I used to like this one. This is called Apricot. I thought maybe it was one that I really liked called Peachy Keen, but it's Apricot. So now I see it. This one is called Andrew's Turquoise because um, there was an artist that used it a lot, a watercolorist well-known. His name was Don Andrews, so they named that after him. Um, but it's a teal, okay? It's probably a thalo. It's cobalt teal, all right? All the light fastness is excellent with these. This one's called mint julep, all right? And it is a thalo cyanine green, Aralide yellow and titanium dioxide. So this one is a made color. So you can make this color. This I love. They call it periwinkle. And I love this. I'm, I'm pretty sure that it's kind of an ultramarine blue and a white. Yeah, ultramarine blue. 
titanium white. Okay, so I like these, and I used to always use these when I taught watercolor because um, you could actually see the mixes on them, which I think is really great because if you don't have these colors, you can mix them and you can know what goes into them. Okay, so this one is really pretty passionate purple, and I think it's some kind of a magenta. Um, violet and quinacridone violet. Oh, thiondigo violet and quinacridone violet. This is Prussian blue, a favorite. This is indigo. I don't usually use indigo too much, but it looked really nice and I thought maybe I could um, substitute it for black. And here's a cobalt blue. I hope it's the same version of cobalt blue. And here's a titanium white. So I'm just gonna wing this and because it's a stir crazy cafe. And I'm gonna put them over there and on the floor. And let's see what happens when we, we put water to them. Okay, this is um, this isn't my favorite watercolor paper, but it's definitely adequate, and it is Arteza, okay, and it is their premium watercolor. They also have a professional watercolor paper, which is which is quite good, okay. Um, I like that a lot. Some of my favorites are Kilimanjaro, which you can get from Cheap Joe's. It's it's their brand. It's very very bright white. And you can get arches, which is less white, but they're all 100% rag and they're really good papers. I generally use uh, cold press, which has a little bit of a tooth to it, but hot press is the smooth kind of watercolor paper. This is, I think, machine molded and it does have a tooth to it on one side and it's um, smooth on the other. So I'm not sure how that's going to play into all of this but let me try out some of these full strength on here that's the Hansa yellow or they call it lemon yellow this is the gamboge here's our Halloween orange or benzamita orange it's rather close to that, but it's it definitely more orange. And then I think I will, what will I line up? I guess I'll line up raw sienna. Okay. They seem to have good coverage, although this is watercolor paper, so you're going to see, um, as opposed to one plain paper, you're going to see white coming through because there's nooks and crannies. Um, maybe what I'll put in the middle is the burnt sienna. Okay, and I'm not sure where to put this peachy flesh color, so maybe I'll put that there. Pretty light. Dry, I don't think that they line up as bright as the Carande Arch or the Stabilo Woodies, but you know, let's see where it goes. Okay, so let me try some of the cool colors. Um, I guess I'll start with the darkest cool color that I have, which is, I would say indigo is probably darker. I'm taking a guess. It's pretty dark. And Prussian. Very close. They look very close. We'll have to check them out wet. And 
than the cobalt. That's a nice cobalt color. And hmm, we're gonna have to do more than more than that. Hmm. I'm going to do this one because I know it's a combination of the cold bolt. Maybe I'll go to another row because we still have the turquoise. Is turquoise in this lighter? I don't know. Warmer, that's for sure. And then have the purple. Try that. Nah, I don't want to try the purple. I'll just put it down here. Now, I didn't get a cad red or anything, and I don't really know why, but I was hoping I could mix these like watercolors. So maybe if I mix this with this, I can get a nice orange. So we might try to mix a little bit, but I don't want to make this too long. I just want to introduce you to the product. Um, and I guess the mint julep, which is um, which is a mix and, and, and kind of an oddball. So those are nice colors. Let's see what happens when we add some water to them. I like these brushes a lot for um, watercolor. You can get them these from Amazon, and they're they're called Lordac Arts. Okay, Lordac Arts, and um, they're very inexpensive. I think this was under twenty dollars for this set, uh, and they perform well. So I like a black brush mostly for watercolor. It's a funny thing, but I really do uh, actually prefer flat brushes, but that's different for everybody. So let's see what happens. So here's the yellow. Let's see if it maintained its integrity. Not bad. It's yellow. It's very light. Gamboge should give us a little bit more light to dark. But it's washing out pretty quick. Here's the Halloween orange. Is there raw sienna? Again, these are washing out pretty quick. The, the color isn't really spreading. So I think you'd have to really, really color your piece of art full strength with these and then add water and move them around because um, they don't stretch. Whereas if I used a tube of watercolor, it would. Go a lot further. I mean, even the burnt sienna. Mm, sorry, Joe. But I'm gonna figure out how how to make these, you know, worth my purchase. So the dark ones are good. But I would say these blues, and you buy them individually. That's indigo. That's Prussian. Pretty close. I like that the brilliance of that Prussian. And they are nice, again, when you wet the full strength scribble. And let's see what happens with the cobalt. Cobalt, a lot of times, is a granulating color uh, right out of the tube. Granulating means it gets little specks in it. And if you like granulating, you know, you use it. And I like it. You just have to plan for it.
That's the periwinkle, which I don't see a big difference once it's wet between that. The Andrews turquoise. Again, they're they're very, very pale. The passionate purple or quinacridone purple. Seems like some of these darker colors are, are kind of the way to to enhance what you might already have. And then this mint julep, which is kind of a more um, opaque color. So I'm thinking maybe the cadmium reds and the opaque colors are, are a better way to go with these. So what I want to see is, you know, how they kind of mix together. All right. This one almost completely died. Um, things are holding up all right. But they're, if, if you like a light wash, I would say... You know, and you want to do line work, and then you want to put a light wash in it. Um, you know, let, let's see how they work. I haven't worked with them, so I'm not sure whether they, you know, would perform like watercolor or not. But that is the look that you will get. I think these two and the Prussian blue are very sweet and I want to see you know if uh, how we if we can make some mixes see what happens shall we let's do it all right could be the paper too I want to try a different paper I don't have one nearby I do have a notebook though but let me see, uh, you know, what happens with these mixes. So let me see if I, uh, let's see if we can mix a nice green, okay? Let's see. We'll see how this color mixes with the other colors, all right? So... I'm going to mix it with the orange. Now on the page, it mixes kind of cool, full strength. Let's see if we can drag it and, and, and see what, what we get. That's kind of pretty. Yeah, that's nice. Right. I might not do this with every color, but I'm going to, to give it a whirl. So you got to really, really press down on it on the page. Okay. And then, um, mm, let me try, uh, let me try a blue. And I can see just drawing on it dry that I could get a nice green. Well, that's not bad. If you drew over it, you could probably mix it dry. See what happens in the middle. That's not bad. I think that is brilliant. All right. And again, the, the Hansa yellow, you know, or lemon yellow, they call it, is, is a very, very pale color. So it's it's going to wash out fairly easily. So I think our, our best bet is mixing it with the darker colors. So let me try mixing that with the Prussian. I think that might give us a a more natural looking green or I don't know greens are uh, are very tough and sometimes uh, old rumors have it that you can tell the sophistication of a painter by how they work with greens so that's kind of pretty 
I like that. That 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 turns almost into a very fallow looking um, green, blue green. So you may not need fallow. Um, let me mix a compliment with that. Let me see what happens when we take that yellow. We mix something across the color wheel. I think maybe I need to spread these a little bit longer. Again, this is my first exploration into this. This is this is uh, not a practice run. This is just me jumping in here and. Okay, so let's see if we use a purple. Purple is across the color wheel from yellow. So if I color over it dry, that's what we get. Now let's see if I mix this with that. I can't have any interruptions now. I can't have any interruptions. All right, so that's just making a yellow. They're just making a lighter, a, a little bit more brownie, maybe more of a burnt sienna than a burnt sienna. <laughs> so the mixes are kind of pretty, you know, that, that's, it's, that, that adds a nice touch to, you know, this palette here. So I think mixing them is probably the way to go. All right, I'm going to try a different yellow. A different yellow will change everything and then mix some of these colors with it. So here's the new Gamboge, which is a bright yellow. And I'm also going to, I'm going to let them overlap. You know, I love to mix my colors, but I'm, I'm not an orderly color mixer. <laughs> so I'm just doing this for our Stir Crazy Cafe time. And, um, but it could be practice and maybe it could actually do a good video on color mixing. Who knows? Okay, so let's see. What do you think I should mix with that? Hmm. Well, let's go back and let's mix the colors that we had. All right, so this is orange, which is close. Orange, cobalt blue. That doesn't blend so great dry. I want to try them on smooth paper too. Uh, and then the Prussian. Hmm. Okay. I have a feeling that might be pretty. And then the purple. That's pretty. I think we're going to get like a really nice red, brown, bright orange with that. One thing I like about watercolors, I don't have to keep changing brushes. They mix pretty good. And then you can just wash it off. So that's very close to that. Okay, but it's just a little little stronger. All right. So I think if you were to to make a you know a design or an illustration or what have you and you colored them in with these that, you know, uh that might be a fun way to play in your sketchbook. But I wouldn't say that in any way they are equal to the basic American Journey or Da Vinci, which is um, a sister company to American Journey. Uh, I, I'd say they behave differently, but they seem like they're a nice portable alternative.
So that's kind of fun. I mean, we get, we get you know, a, still a bigger variety, and they're much brighter when they're mixed together. So I would say that's the way to go. If we want to make some neutrals, let's see what happens if we try to make some neutrals. Um, I don't know how well these will hold up, but let's see. Hmm. Sometimes if you mix something kooky like this, with this, which is like a flesh tone. I think I would need a lot. I'm just going to try the um, a couple of different ones. They're opposite on the color wheel and stuff. Um, hmm. Oh yeah, how about like turquoise with orange? Those are opposite on the color wheel, right? Secondary mixes. That should give us some kind of an interesting green too. That's sometimes a really cool green, a really neat khaki. I think we'll get with that. Let's see. Mm, but if I go for, what was this? Quinacridone Sienna, which would be bright. But let's see. If I put like a burnt Sienna. Yeah, that's an old mix. Uh, like a burnt Sienna or a Quinacridone Sienna here with uh, a Cobalt Blue. That's an old master's mix to, to get some nice neutrals. Could try mixing them or I can do the squirt thing that I used to do, but I don't think the color is strong enough to do the squirt grip thing. But let me see if I have my little squirt bottle. pretty strong so you get a lot of boogerettes that's something that I notice let's see this is a fun thing to do and then just get some water at the bottom so it catches it and see what kind of mixes you get all right let's go Ready? Ooh. Ooh. That's fun. All right. So you get some kind of coolish grays. All right, you can see it down in here. That one went past the mark. I think if we <clears throat> if we mix them up here, that doesn't change much, but it definitely grays that blue. So that's pretty. This one will give us a, to give us kind of a khaki green. It's kind of pretty. And this one, they really hung in there, fighting each other. So these are pretty strong. And down here, you can see they give you an interesting mix, but it seems like the uh, warmer colors are dominating in, in these particular pigments. Let me see if I add a little bit more. This is hanging in. I'll put that blue in there. Yeah, this way you can see that they're they're neutralizing each other. And that one, what did I have? I had this with it, right? So 
So if we put them on top of each other wet without too much water, yeah, we'll get we'll get some decent neutrals there. Colorful neutrals, I call them. Uh, let me see. Yeah, but they cake they're caking up. So you gotta kinda play with these and find your stride with them. Whoops, a little bit more orange over here. Get out of there. Mmm. I'm not a fan of that. That's a cool look though, right? color in the middle. It's kind of neat. This color in the middle is a pretty good gray. But again, it, it's not a really intense pigment. Hard to see, hard to see. But I do like what happened up there. So let's see, on a scale of one to 10, I think I would give these American Journeys to using them as watercolors, mm, maybe a four. I, I am I'm really picky about my watercolors, okay. I'm going to see what happens if we go into a sketchbook. All right. So this paper is a little bit different. This, this is an Arteza sketchbook as well. But I think the quality of the paper in here is a little bit better. It's not as toothy. So I'm just going to do like maybe use these abstractly and 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 play you know let's just let's just play across here i think i'm going to test up on this side maybe and i'm going to play over here so mm. Put some play. I think I'm probably going to end up making a lot of mud because with watercolor, unless you're going to use these dry like a Coran de Arche, um, you know, they're going to... Well, I liked what the yellow did with the orange, right? So I think I'm going to kind of stay in the warm family here and see what what can be done. So I'm going to go for that because again, if I'm going like watercolor, then, you know, unless I want everything to, and you can always go over it, of course, because we're mixed media artists with um, acrylics. Let's see. Because I usually use my, you know, uh, what they call water soluble soluble wax pastels dry like when we do get your cray cray on I don't add a lot of water to it I think that it, it's nice if you do a combination of that and if you want to bump the color up then you go back in you know full strength with your crayon All right so I like that. I think that's pretty. 
and if I could get a nice drip. I'm not sure if it'll drip or not. But if I do spray it, this spray is a little bit hard. Most likely I'll get one. Or two. We'll see. But I don't know if it brings the color with it. Mm. So it doesn't want to drip a lot. But we did get a little bit. I wish I had a red now. See? Now, if I had my Carande R's when I started mixing it, I have, I think I have a couple up here, but I don't have a lot, but I do have a red. Gray isn't going to help me, but see now, I think these are probably superior. Let's see what happens. Oh, man. You see how that is on there? It's so intense. I don't have all my colors up here because I can really go to town on this thing. But all right. Let me just make some kooky marks. Let me get my cray, cray paint on. And I know a lot of you mix yours a lot or that you dip your crayons in water and stuff like that. Like I said, I'm I'm kind of a purist when it comes to watercolor, so I really, really like to, um, I don't like it to, to wash out. I like it to stay vibrant. That makes us all right over the top of that, um, the Coran de Arche. And see, it's different. It's different on a, on a smoother tooth. That was had a lot of big tooth to it. By big tooth, I mean nooks and crannies in the paper. It's rough. I think this works better on smooth paper. So that's something that we learned. Um, right. But now if I add a little water, and I, I like I said, I rarely do. I'm always reluctant because I love that. To add water to my Korean de Arche. I think it, you know, it'll it'll hold up. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh. That is so beautiful. Mm. Yeah, I'm in La La Land there. I have ones with that. Gives me a nice orange. Let's see if I can get this purple to to stay to stay around. All right, so the uh, streaks stay in it, all right, unless I really, really scrub it. So you see how it, that doesn't happen with the Korean de Ars? Ooh, I'm not selling either one of these, okay? So I've got nothing to, uh, to earn or lose by it. Let's see what happens uh, if I add a little white. Yeah, I don't think this is going to hold up, but I think that if we were to go back in here uh, when it's drier, you know, you might be able to make some neat pinks and things like that. Um, it might be nice to to pop a little turquoise in here, here and there, but I. I really wish I had my Korean Day arches up here because I'm spoiled with that. And they last a really long time. So I would highly recommend the American Journey watercolors, all right? I don't have them to show you because it's been a long time. So a lot of them have been used up or, or are dry by now, but they last a long, long time. And they're, 
They're, act, they're a very, very wonderful, reliable brand of watercolor. Uh, I would say that the watercolor crayons are probably really fun to do quick plein air sketches and what have you. But um, uh, other than that, I would suggest, I'm gonna go with my grease pencil now because it's wet and I still can do something fun with that. Um, do some additional scribble, scrabble pals here. Maybe I'll just use a little of this for accent color. I don't want to mix it up too, too much, but dry it might be nice as periwinkle next to that yellow and stuff. But I wouldn't wet it because I wouldn't want to lose it. And I think that it'll wash away. But it does look pretty in the mix like that. So I think if you're coloring in between lines that um, and, and not adding water, that 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 you'd probably um, enjoy it. Now I'm just playing. And so I think that about would do it for our Stir Crazy Cafe for today, pre-recorded. And um, I just used my camcorder for the first time. So I hope that that works out. I haven't figured out how to get it like really focused because when I hold stuff up closer, it's kind of blurry, but I'm working on it, everybody. And uh, thanks for joining me uh, in this pre-recorded or later recorded or same time recorded um, stir crazy cafe and I'll see you on the other side bye for now